Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of The Book Report, presented by The Millions. My name is Mike. My name is Janet. And this week, Janet and I are going to be talking about books that we read. I just finished a book that I really loved called Get in Trouble by Kelly Link. This is the first Kelly Link that I have read, although I've been hearing about how great she is for 10 years. So... Thumbs up for me for finally reading <laughs> Kelly Link. The premise of every story always has some thing. Like, they have goats, or they have vampires and werewolves, or they have robots, or holograms, or, like, there's always something. But the supernatural elements are always sort of, like, present, but not the point of the story. Sure. Um, it's always more how the human characters, who are frequently, it should be said, teenagers or young adults, mm. um, how they interact with supernatural elements. They're so inventive. They're so original. Um, and they're, yeah, they're all like a little weird. They're all a little weird. But they're great. And um, one of my favorite ones is called The Demon Lover. And it's about these two people who are um, actors, and when they were young, they played, like, a demon lover and his human girlfriend in a franchise of movies mm. that were enormously popular, and then were a couple in real life, and so oh, wow. everybody's, like, obsessed with them as a couple. It seems very much like Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. Um and so the story takes place maybe like 10 years later when their relationship has been over for quite some time, but they're still always kind of like drawn to each other um, and they meet up again and something weird happens. And it reminded me a lot of um, Karen Russell's Vampires in the Lemon Grove. Oh yeah, it's a great book. It's a great book. I think you convinced me to read that because... I hated Swamplandia. Hey, Ted, Swamplandia. <laughs> and then uh, you reviewed Vampires in Love and Grove very favorably in NPR. And I think I emailed you and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, yeah. <laughs> but it was actually good, right? I mean, yeah. it was uh, surprisingly great. Yeah, yeah. Always trust Michael Schaub is what everybody says. I'm not sure if like, I love this about it but it's definitely like a, a standout feature is that she does not go to any lengths to explain the premise of the stories or like the reality in which the characters are operating at the beginning of the story. Every story feels like this second chapter of a science fiction novel where like you missed the first chapter with all the explication of like, we live on a planet where the water is red and there's a civil war going on. Blah, 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 blah. Um, it's like she skips all of that and just gets into the action and leaves it up to you to figure out that there are vampires. Yeah, which is awesome. Which is great. Yeah. I, like, I like it a lot. I like Kelly Link a lot. What about you? What have you read lately that you'd like to tell me about? I read a book uh, that, that I recommend. I'm not entirely sure I understand it, but... Uh, it's called On the Abolition of All Political Parties by Simone Weil, uh, published by New York Review of Books Classics. And you can kind of tell what political mood I'm in because I chose this book. It's a surprisingly convincing book. It's very, very, very short. It's actually kind of more of an essay. It's basically about her view that political parties are causing the political system to be completely broken. Um, and it's interesting. It's very interesting. She kind of makes the point that it's sort of screwed up when people say, well, as a socialist, I think that blah, 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 or as a conservative Republican, I think that taxes should be blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it kind of makes sense that we've all accepted that as part of the political discourse, but it's actually kind of screwed up. That's a really interesting point, though. It is. It, it's, it should be yeah. like, well, I believe in, I believe X, Y, Z, and therefore I belong to the Democrat. That's Not exactly right. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's kind of like a putting the cart before the horse thing, where, like, uh, you know, when you hear you politicians just say, like, this is what I think on this issue, this issue and, and on this issue, and this issue, and this issue. 
uh, and that it shouldn't be, well, I'm a Democrat, so I believe in, in doing this, or I'm a Republican, so I believe that we should regulate this, or deregulate this, probably, if you're a Republican. I'm not that well-read on philosophy, but she's, you know, an interesting, I think she was kind of a leftist, she was a Christian mystic, uh, a very, you know, had a lot to do with the Free France movement and, and Charles de Gaulle. Uh, but I mean, honestly, after reading it, I, you know, I'm still a little cynical, like, oh yeah, like we can really remake the entire political system, but I couldn't find a lot in this to, to say like, oh, you're crazy, Simone, you know, like that's, that'll never work. All her points are kind of solid. Anyway. Anyway, so yeah, down with uh, political parties. Yeah, I don't know. I'm saying just read, read what Simone Fay has to say, and I think you will continue to feel, dear viewer, angry and impotent and generally disengaged from the American political system. That's a book report guarantee. Thank you for watching. <laughs> we'll never walk alone. We'll never walk alone, Mike. See you next week.